you have presided over what Shelter has called the worst housing conditions they have ever seen. Are you ashamed by what has happened? I share absolutely everyone's level of shock and outrage at what viewers would have seen yesterday and the photographs that I saw um, on Friday. That's why we acted immediately to make sure that our residents were relocated on Friday afternoon. And we have had officers in the block today knocking on doors to make sure that everyone um, amongst the neighbours and um, to make sure that there are um, no similar issues elsewhere in the block. We have launched um, uh, an inquiry that will be independently led tomorrow. We've referred ourselves to the health and safety executive and to the regulator for social housing so that we can find out exactly what has happened and how on earth this could have happened um, without our knowledge or intervention. You said there that we acted immediately. Um, for over four months, residents have been telling you about this. Over four months, they've been living in those conditions. You must feel ashamed to lead a council am, that allows that to happen. I am so very sorry to those residents for that experience. Are you Just ashamed? To watch Are you personally ashamed to lead a council that does that to people? I am, I am very sorry for those residents in that You're experience. Not. It is appalling, it's absolutely unacceptable. I have absolutely agree with you. It's completely unacceptable that any of our residents have had that experience. I'm asking you, I'm asking you if you feel personal shame as the council leader that has presided over the worst housing conditions, not only Shelter have seen, but Dame Judith Hackett, who led the Grenfell report has seen. Do you feel personal shame for what has happened? I think anyone looking at those pictures would do. And that's why I'm asking we have you a very direct question. Quickly. Do you feel personal shame? It is shameful what has happened. Do you feel personal shame? I, I do. It is completely unacceptable. And that's why we have done everything we can. You're absolutely right. We did not know about this situation. The minute that I was aware and saw those photographs on Friday morning, we moved to act. But you're absolutely right. That is one of the things that I want to understand. Why on earth this could have happened without our, not our knowing beforehand, despite our residents contacting the council, as they have told you repeatedly, to resolve the situation? This is one of the most fundamental questions that I think this inquiry needs to answer. For four months, they've been telling you this. For, in fact, in Leroy McNally's case, he's been telling you for longer than that. This is, of course, you are one person in your council there is a whole stream of people according to Leroy and to Franzoy repair teams went in to see those flats this people some people did know what was going on there in your organization members of the repair team knew what was going on so what happened Are, have you got reports from your repair teams of what was going on in those flats or were no reports ever filed that is, I met with council officers um, first thing this morning um, and asked all of these questions. This inquiry has been launched today. It will be independently led tomorrow. And this is exactly some of the questions that we need to answer. You're absolutely right. Um, as Mr. McNally has said to you, repairs uh, teams attended um, three times, as I understand it. Um, and for that not to have translated for that not to have led in immediate action is one of the fundamental questions that this needs to answer and properly assurance that no other residents, no other of our tenants are having a similar experience. You have said that there's an investigation and you want to assure people this is not widespread, it's not happening elsewhere. How confident can you be that this is not happening in other tower blocks, other properties run by your council? How confident can you be this is not happening elsewhere? I think that is precisely why, as part of this inquiry, all 16 of the similar blocks in the borough will be reviewed and looked at as part of this inquiry. It is needs to be very quick. I've asked for it to be completed within two weeks, um, and we absolutely need that confidence. I can't answer that question um, here, and that's not acceptable, and that is precisely why this action is being taken. So you as council leader can't tell us tonight if the conditions that Franzoy and her two children were living in and, and Leroy was living in is not happening elsewhere. You can't tell us that. It might be happening in other blocks and you don't know. 
That is precisely why this action is so important because we have to get to the bottom of what happened in this case for our residents and to understand the situation for residents across the borough. Isn't that absolutely remarkable that you can't come on here and say with any kind of confidence that the worst housing conditions in Britain may be happening in another 16 blocks? I think what's most important is that the minute that this was brought to my attention, we acted immediately. It, oh, you're absolutely right. This should have happened at the very beginning, the first time that our residents contacted their council, their landlord, who provides their home for them um, to be able to fix that situation immediately. And that's what the focus of this um, next two weeks will be, is getting to the absolute bottom of this and addressing this situation. So this does not happen again for any of our residents. Why don't you know this stuff? Why don't you know what's going on in your tower blocks? What is going on at Croydon Council that you don't know how your residents are living? That is one of the most fundamental questions that it's this action needs to answer. To answer. It's an I agree. unbelievable question that I have to ask you and you can't as the council leader answer it. Given what we have seen, given what um, our residents that you spoke to, the appalling conditions that they have had to endure for as long as they have, my focus is on making sure that we get this action done, we understand exactly what happened, this does not happen again. Right now, um, and I've been to see Franzoi today, um, she is in a local hotel. Um, she doesn't know how long she's going to be there, and I can tell you why, is because when she was moved there on Friday by the council, she's not had a single uh, communication with the council since Friday. It's now Tuesday. No one's spoken to her. No one's told her how long she'll be in that hotel for. Why has no one from the council been contacting her every day to see how she is? This is one of the questions. So I understand what you've just told me. I understand. And that is one of the did things you not, did that... Did you not know that? I, uh, you, you've told me that. My, uh, I haven't had an opportunity to speak to Miss Hewitt myself. I would very much like to. One of the things I will be raising tomorrow, I'm meeting daily with officers for an update on this situation. Sorry, just to make not, sure sorry, that we have somebody who is keeping not, in touch sorry, with our residents. It's not difficult for you to call her. It is not difficult for you as the council leader. If you are that sorry, if you feel that much shame, it is not that difficult for you to call Franzoi. It is not that difficult for you to call Leroy. Why, if you feel I, this much shame, and you are that sorry to them, why haven't you called them and said, I'm sorry? I, if I may, I have been fortunate enough to speak to Mr. McNally uh, today. I've not had an opportunity. I've not been able to make contact with Miss Hewitt. Well, um, but I would very what, much like what to. What have you been doing that's more important than contacting the woman living in the worst housing conditions in Britain? No, uh, yeah, it is absolutely a priority for the organisation. Uh, well, one of the questions really that I'm raising. Because you haven't done it. She's been living in these conditions for months. She moved out on Friday and you haven't even bothered to call her. I, I have been able to speak to Mr. McNally. I'm very sorry that I've not been able to speak to Ms. Hewitt. I will, um, one, of the, um, one of the issues that I'm going to be raising is making sure, making sure that we are in contact with our residents um, to understand exactly what their experience is and to make that as um, comfortable as possible in, the, in these um, horrific circumstances. You don't need an inquiry to pick up the phone, council leader. Um, on the allegations, um, your camera appears to have gone off for a second there. On the allegations of, of, of racism levelled by Lee, he says that when he called uh, up the council and he used his Christian name um, as a black person, he believed he was given worse treatment than when he used his surname, Mr McNally. And he said, and his quote is, he got a better response when basically you didn't think he was black. Is part of the problem here, part of the discrimination here, that he was black and he was poor? That's a really concerning um, experience that Mr McNally has shared. I would want that to be part of the um, inquiry that we do to, to understand exactly what has happened. Um, and that, that, that will need to be um, uh, addressed as part of the inquiry. That's a really shocking um, uh, experience that he's, um, he's shared. Well, is, is your council racist in the way it deals with residents when they ring up complaining? I think this inquiry needs to answer the questions about what's happened in this situation. Um, we you, are, you th is your council racist in the way it deals with residents' complaints? We are not an organisation. We are an organisation that wants to be an anti-racist organisation and that meets the needs of all our residents in all their diversity. That's why I would want to understand um, if what has happened in this situation. 
and we can understand that needs to look at exactly what has happened when our residents first contacted what was the council's response why has this situation not been responded to immediately we need to understand exactly the catalog of contact that our residents made with the council to understand what did we do in response at each stage and make sure that um, that we are holding ourselves to account this inquiry will be independently led from tomorrow so that that can be properly done so you need an inquiry to tell me whether your organisation is racist? I want to understand what's happened in this particular situation. We are an organisation that, um, that seeks um, to meet the needs of the, the range of our, the diversity of our residents. We do, we, and we um, would want to advance um, equality and we have, um, and, and, and to tackle um, racism. We want to be an anti-racist organisation, um, but we need to understand, given what Mr. McNally has shared, it's a very serious concern and I want to understand exactly what happened in this situation. We spoke to Dame Judith Hackett yesterday. She, of course, authored the report into building safety following Grenfell, and she said the culture of people being ignored in tower blocks hasn't changed quickly enough. The story of Grenfell was one of residents being ignored time and time again by a local council and the absolute worst happened. What the story here is people living in dangerous conditions and the involvement of us stopped it getting even worse. Why did it take ITV News to intervene for Croydon Council to pull these people out of dangerous situations? You're absolutely right. That is what has happened in this situation. And that is also one that this cannot happen again. And I, you know, I'm so, um, it is completely unacceptable that our residents were not heard. They were not heard by us. And that is something that um, is completely unacceptable to me um, uh, and to the organisation and absolutely needs to be fixed. That is exactly our priority right now to be able to establish what has happened and to make sure we do what needs to be done to, um, to repair the situation for our residents who've been affected in this case and make sure that that is not the experience of any other of our tenants. Are you considering your position over this? My focus is on fixing this situation. The moment that this was raised to my attention on Friday, we acted. And so my focus is on addressing this situation and to fix this and to ensure that our residents, um, are, are all our residents, all our tenants uh, are warm and safe in the homes that we provide for them. Is anyone in your organisation even thinking about considering their position like this? I think that this, um, this investigation into what has happened is very important to understand you know, where did the system fall down? What has not worked? What needs to be fixed? And we will need to look at both ourselves and our contractors to understand what action needs to be taken. And clearly action will need to be taken. Final couple of questions, and they're quite practical ones, but they're really important. Right now, uh, Leroy and Franzoy are in a hotel Croydon. They don't know when they're going to be moved from uh, there. Can you give us any uh, information any knowledge of when they'll be able to move out because right now for instance Franzoy has two young boys I went there today and um, I speak to her every day um, and she's living in a hotel room with no fridge no cooking facilities no washing machine it's safe and warm she's not going to get electrocuted and um, thank god but she is living in unsuitable accommodation when will she be moving uh, this was one of the questions that I raised this morning. I'm speaking to officers on a daily basis on this. It will, of course, take time to um, to repair their homes, um, and they clearly can't be in that accommodation. I, when I spoke to Mr McNally, he raised the very same concerns with me, and that's why I'll be raising tomorrow how we're ensuring that we are keeping in contact with our tenants on a daily basis and that we move them to more suitable accommodation as soon as we can. People need to be able to access food, to be able to cook, and I appreciate that the um, location that they're in the moment doesn't facilitate that, and that is one of my top concerns. Have you been yet to see the flat yet? Uh, I, have, I haven't as yet. Why? I, 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 there, I haven't had an opportunity to be there as yet, but I am very keen to be able to go and see that for myself. What your picture showed, what the photograph showed on Friday was truly shocking. Um, and when I share absolutely everyone's outreach, that's why we've acted as quickly um, as we can. Um, and that's why the action that's being taken um, uh, is so important. You talk about moving them back in as soon as possible. I mean, I went today, five days after you'd moved them out. It's exactly the same. Council leader, it's exactly the same. Nothing's being done. There is water still dripping from the ceilings, the bucket, the baby bath is full. 
and nothing's changed in those five days. So when you talk about them moving as soon as possible, I mean, realistically, given the condition of them, it's going to be weeks and months. So is the plan to keep them in the Premier Inn until it's fixed or are you going to try and move them to proper accommodation until, that, until it's fixed? That's exactly the question that I'm asking. You're right. It you're will clearly council, take some time to be a council leader. Why do you appear not to know the answer to anything? Why do you have to ask questions of everybody else? I have made my expectations and my instructions clear that we need to be fixing this situation and that we need to make sure that our residents are taken care of. You're absolutely right. It will take time to repair our residents' homes and they will need a more permanent temporary arrangement. And that is exactly the conversation that I'm have with, having with officers on a daily basis to make sure that they can be, be placed in the right accommodation um, that they need. Final question, of course, your council is bankrupt. And do you even have enough money to fix these problems? We set a balanced budget um, earlier this month. Um, and I think it's also important to say that our, um, the funding that we um, receive from our residents in their rents are kept in a separate account. And the investment that we put to look after people's properties is kept separately. The challenges that we've been facing financially have been around our general fund. However, following um, financial assistance uh, through um, a loan arrangement with government, we have set a balanced budget. So finances have not been relevant to this situation at all. We need to understand what has gone wrong so that it can be fixed as quickly as possible. Before you go, how would you feel if you knew that any member of your family was living in those conditions? I think this is exactly the reflection that everybody has had watching your report. And my res response has been no different. And that's exactly why we have tried to act as quickly as we can, as soon as we may be made aware of this. It should not have taken your report to bring this to our attention for us to act. I completely accept that. I don't accept this situation and I want it sorted as quickly as possible for our residents that you have been speaking with and, for all, and to ensure that all of our residents um, are safe in their homes. Councillor Leader, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much.